And thanks, Wolf. We're continuing our breaking news coverage of the state of emergency in Baltimore tonight. Good evening. I'm Aaron Burnett. Protesters lining up in the streets of Baltimore just hours before that new citywide curfew goes into effect. The city desperately trying to prevent a repeat of last night. Maryland's governor moments ago announcing he is doubling the number of National Guard troops on the streets tonight. 2,000 heavily armed troops will be at the ready. They will join another 1,000 law enforcement officers. That is an incredibly uh, significant number, 3,000. It is extremely tense in Baltimore tonight, and while most of the protests have been peaceful today, incidents like the one I'm about to show you show how the calm can disappear thanks to one person. Man is back again. He has decided that he wants to throw something at officers. The officers are moving in. He is now going to be arrested. No. Oh. Here. Here we go. And the anger clearly visible on the streets today. So one person. One person. Jesus say, turn up a cheek, right? Oh, you only got two. But I done smacked you like 16 times. How many times I'm going to smack you for you smack me back? Run. Flat out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty powerful moment when you look at the police commissioner and you look at that protester telling him F you, F you. President Obama now weighed in for the first time on the riot in Baltimore. He placed the blame on, in his words, quote, criminals and thugs. Also expressed his frustration, though, with the number of cases similar to that of Freddie Gray. It comes up, it seems like, once a week now, or once every couple of weeks. And so I think it's pretty understandable why the leaders of civil rights organizations, uh, but more importantly, moms and dads across the country might start saying this is, a, this is a crisis. Meanwhile, tonight's Orioles White Sox game was postponed for the second night in a row and in what will be a first in American sports history. The game will be played tomorrow afternoon. There will be no fans allowed. Camden Yards, the stadium for the Baltimore Orioles, will be completely empty. They will play that game alone. A lot of major developments tonight. We have our reporters across Baltimore covering all the angles. We want to begin tonight with Ryan Young. He is with protesters. Uh, Ryan, obviously a few hours until that curfew. I know people uh, have been building on the street. You've got 3,000 law enforcement, 2,000 National Guard. What are you seeing? Well, so far, people have been really policing themselves. And in fact, you're walking back in this direction. This was the center of a lot of the things that happened just last night. That's the CVS right across the street. We're on North Avenue, where you saw that fire burning so intensely. Now the flames are out. We've actually seen people working together to pull some of the debris out of there to help with the cleanup. But what we've really been struck by all day long is the peaceful protest that's been happening here in terms of the line that's been created between police officers and the people who've shown up to protest. Us. We were standing here a few hours ago when that young man decided to throw that bottle toward police and it was initially the crowd that reacted, grabbed him and tried to hold him, but that didn't work for long because he came back and threw another bottle and that's when that pepper spray was sprayed across the entire part of the crowd and of course we got some of us on us, but for the most part. The crowd here created a circle in this area. They've been playing music all day and in fact in the distance you can hear the drums still playing here. Everyone was talking about keeping Baltimore safe tonight. They wanted to make sure the city was seen differently. We've seen black people, white people, people coming out here with their families, wanting to make sure that they took a part of the cleanup. And that's something that we've witnessed all day long for the most part, for about six hours. Nothing was wrong here until that one young man decided to toss his frustrations with the bottle toward police. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. And uh, obviously these next few hours are going to be crucial to see what happens on the streets of Baltimore tonight. For most of the day, the protesters were camped out outside the CVS where Ryan just was. Uh, that, of course, is the CVS that was set on fire last night where protesters actually had cut holes in the fire hose to prevent them from putting that fire out. I want to go to be Miguel Marquez. He was there. He saw that hose be cut. He's been covering this story from the beginning. Uh, Miguel, the sun will be setting soon. That's when last night everything took a turn dramatically for the world. Uh, what what are you seeing now? What are you feeling in terms of the tone? Well, it, look, today has been sort of part uh, political rally, part street festival. You can hear a band actually. I'm going to put the mic out. You can hear a band still playing over on that side of things. Uh, last night we were just about 50, 60 feet away when when those the hose was punched two times with with a knife by two different individuals. This is the scene tonight. So this is North and Pennsylvania Avenues. Just a few blocks that way is where Mr. Gray was arrested. You can see the people that are lined up here. They've been doing this all day. It's an amazing thing. How are you guys? 
uh, they, they're lining up here because this is the face that they want the world to see when they look down North Avenue. You can see, if you look again, the police have been lined up behind, uh, behind them uh, this entire time. So they front the police. The police are manning this part of North Avenue. It is a little odd only because you can drive around the block and you can get to where Freddie Gray was uh, arrested. You can get down to Western District. I can tell you the Western District Police uh, Station that has been such a focal point for much of the anger and the protests in recent days. It is uh, very heavily fortified. They pushed the uh, the perimeter back. There are National Guard troops there who are assisting police, filling in for police in some cases, uh, so that uh, police officers can be on the streets. That seems to be basically what Baltimore is doing, having uh, National Guard fill in for s some of those places and then uh, allowing police to be the more public face uh, for things here. The mood still very tense. People are angry, they're upset, and, and one thing that I have learned since being in this neighborhood for the last couple of weeks, that, that the anger that they have, uh, that, they, that they focus on police is very, very personal. Everybody seems to have a beef. Everybody has a concern with police here, and, and that's what erupted last night. The, uh, the, the, the protesters today saying that they are going to continue this, clean up their, their, uh, their community, and hope that this is the beginning of something better. Aaron. All right, Miguel, thank you very much. I want to go to Brian Todd, who right now is marching with protesters. Uh, Brian, who are you with? Where are you going? Aaron, with, with a couple of hundred protesters that are marching in the heart of downtown Baltimore, I think in the vicinity of City Hall, they're marching toward City Hall. We're not sure exactly where they're going. They may not even be sure exactly where they're going. Uh, they are, they've been determined to sometimes block intersections to make their point. Sometimes they will stop at an intersection, sometimes even sit down, uh, and then they will move. So they've been doing this now for a couple of hours. Last week, we were with them uh, for about four hours as they hiked about five miles through the heart of Baltimore and through the heart of the neighborhood where Freddie Gray grew up and where he was arrested. So we're not sure exactly where this protest is going. The leader of the protest, his name is Jay Morrison. He's walking ahead of us. He's very energetic. He's been leading them in cheers all evening long. He has told us that he is very, very insistent that this crowd not get violent. There's been no sign of it. We're, of course, hoping there is no sign of it later on, Aaron. Of course we are, and, and, and as you can see there, um, obviously there's children as well, uh, which we saw in the uh, other nights when things turned violent. And of course, a lot of the people responsible for the looting and rioting last night were teenagers, but still uh, important to emphasize our children among the crowds tonight. Out front now, former NAACP President Kwasi Mfume. He's also a former congressman who represented Baltimore. He's been on the streets with protesters, and also with me, the Baltimore City Councilman Carl Stokes. And I appreciate both of you taking the time. Congressman, let me start with you. You just... Uh, you know, heard that one young protester, you know, extremely upset, uh, you know, when he had that moment next to the uh, the commissioner for police. He's throwing around uh, the F-bomb repeatedly. The commissioner was stoic and did not respond to him. What's your reaction, though, when you hear that, when you hear what our Miguel Marquez just said, that they are angry, that they are upset, that this is visceral, when you hear the anger on the streets? Well, it's the, the anger, anger that's been here for the last 40 years. It's just that it has boiled over and now the world is seeing it. It's poverty and that's its basic root. It's despair, it's deprivation, degradation. It's disprivilege among people and a disbelief in the system that it will ever do anything for them. You hear the protests behind me now in cars that have engulfed this whole area downtown. People are trying to express themselves while they can under this curfew and to do that peacefully. Those who can't do it peacefully are going to go to jail. I mean, it's real simple. You can't burn down property that belongs to other people. You can't put grandmothers and mothers in harm's way. You right. can't threaten kids in the neighborhood just because they're not joining you. So, so, and I want to get to more to that point in just a moment. Councilman Stokes, I want to ask you about the anger. Are you concerned it could turn into more violence tonight? Or does it appear that it's under control? No, After all, there are 3,000 now National Guard and police on the streets. Right. I don't think it's under control because there are 3,000 police in the street. And I can't predict what will happen later, but I can tell you that today has been a tremendously good day in Baltimore. Uh, we woke up this morning at 5 a.m. cleaning up the streets, cleaning up the neighborhoods. People have come out of their doors. No one is staying behind closed doors in yeah. Baltimore. The residents are coming out and saying, this is our town, this is our city. Our issue is justice being served. So there were a few aberrant, and I know um, that that was a terrible scene that we saw last night and a little bit on Saturday. But the greater majority, so 
a few hundred people versus hundreds of thousands of residents of Baltimore City have come out of their homes and said, this is Baltimore, this is our Baltimore, and they're showing uh, just who we are and why we're standing up for justice, not only for Freddie Gray, but yeah. for all of the Freddie Grays that have been killed or brutalized in Baltimore. And, and Councilman, you know, it's interesting because the mayor of Baltimore, who's come under a lot of criticism, scathing criticism for her handling of this, referred to uh, the people who were doing this last night as thugs. And she got a lot of criticism for that. There were people I saw on Twitter saying, why would you call them thugs? Then they're not going to listen to you. President Obama also called the protesters, in his words today, quote, unquote, criminals and thugs. He also carefully chose to use that word. Isn't it the right word? No, of course it's not the right word to call our children thugs. These are children who have been set aside, marginalized, who have not been engaged by us. No, we don't have to call them thugs. But how does that justify thugs. what they did? That that I mean, that's a sense of right from wrong. They know it's wrong to steal and burn down a CVS and an old person's home. I mean, come on. Come on. So calling them thugs, call, just call them niggers. Just call them niggers. No, we don't have to call them by names such as that. We don't have to do that. That is exactly what we've sent them to. No, when you say come on, come on what? You wouldn't call your child a thug if they should do something that would not be what you would expect them to do. Look, I respect your point of view. I would hope that I would call my son a thug if he ever did such a thing. But, but, but Congressman, let me ask you to respond to Councilman Stokes. Do you think that calling um, the bad actors well, last night thugs is the me, equivalent of the N-word? Let, 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 me, let me just do something here, because it's important we not shift the focus into something that has absolutely nothing to do with poverty, despair, hunger, homelessness, and a sense of not belonging. That's what this is coming out of. So whether we call him a thug, a lawbreaker, a juvenile delinquent, it really doesn't matter. What matters is how do we take back our streets? And that's what men have been doing, going around, talking to these young men where they are in their face and letting them know you can't control this community. It is not yours. You can't burn it down. Mm -hmm. You can't force people out. You can't threaten people. So I, I understand that that people right. want to talk about a word, but I'm more worried about a movement. And it's not necessarily a movement for positive change. It's a movement for negative change right now, unless we get it under control. Councilman, in terms of the mother that got a lot of attention, and I know you know this, you've seen this picture, sure. after uh, the video captured her um, berating her son for participating in the protests. Uh, she spoke to CBS sure. about why she was seen hitting her child, which is what she was doing. She was telling him not to do it, but, but she was doing it by hitting him. Here's what she said to CBS. Lo and behold, I turn around and I look in this crowd and my son is actually coming across the street with this hoodie on and uh, a mask. At that point, I just lost it. That's my only son. And at the end of the day, I don't want him to be a Freddie Gray. Now, Councilman, what's your response to that? I mean, you know, you see her trying to do the right thing. Of course, she's doing it by being very violent against her, her son. Um, did she What's your reaction to what she did? Well, you say violent. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Violent. I mean, she's trying to tell him, if you don't get off this street, I will drag you home. Now, if that's violence, then maybe that's necessary violence. And yeah. a lot of mothers are reacting that way. And a lot of us grew up with that. So you didn't make the same mistake twice. But she is doing what she has to do out there in the street to remind her son that he is her son that she is, he, she is his mother and she won't tolerate it. So I know for some people it might say, oh my God, she hit him. Yeah, she hit him because she's trying to make him understand that she loves him and she doesn't want him out there. And, and Councilman, what should and police be doing? Save his life. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Councilman Stokes. But I was gonna say, as she was trying to save his life, it is clear that it's better that she hit him than the police hit him and brutalize him and take his life from him. All right. Well, I appreciate both of your time very much tonight. Thank you very much. A very provocative conversation. Uh, next, as we've got now 2,000 National Guard troops uh, ready here in Baltimore, another 1,000 police are on the streets of Baltimore. Protesters are gathering. Uh, we'll see what will happen over the next couple of hours before that curfew takes effect. And could the whole riot have been inspired by a movie? We're going to talk about The Purge. And we'll go live to a Baltimore town meeting. That is the tension tonight running very, very high in that room. Angry residents are going to be signing off live. We'll be right back.